so in the last lecture, uh, I will uh, explain the Drinfield double construction for Lie by algebras. And so this construction is uh, very important because it allows us to construct many examples of Lie-by algebras from objects which are much more classical in some sense, such as Mannion triples. And uh, also, uh, this construction uh, exists also in the quantum world, and there it corresponds to an important construction in category theory, which is the construction of uh, the center of a category. But I will only talk about this for Lie-by algebras. Uh, so first I'll start with a definition uh, of a Mannion triple. So uh, I will define Mannion triples only for finite dimensional Lie algebras. So I will not say, uh, well, uh, let me just in parentheses say finite dimensional Mannion triple is a, a a triple G, G plus, G minus, uh, where G is a finite dimensional Lie algebra with uh, an invariant symmetric bilinear form non-degenerate symmetric by linear form so sometimes people say quadratically algebra uh, and G plus G minus in G are isotropic under this form Lie sub algebras such that uh, G is equal to G plus direct sum with G minus as a vector space. So uh, they do not uh, have to commute with each other, but purely as a vector space, we require that G is a direct sum. So that means they don't intersect, namely intersection is zero, and uh, uh, they span the whole G. And in this situation, we automatically have that they are Lagrangian. And uh, their dimensions are the same and equals to one half of the dimension of G. So d dimension of G is even. Because uh, an isotropic subspace of an inner product space uh, cannot have dimension more than half of the dimension of the space. And when it has dimension half, it's maximal and uh, Lagrangian. Uh, Lagrangian means maximal isotropic. And here, uh, since they're both isotropic, they, they have to both be Lagrangian because of the balance of dimension. Any questions about this definition? Okay, so we will now show that this notion, which is uh, somehow much more classical, and it will be much easier to construct examples of this, uh, because it doesn't mention any weird things like co-brackets, is in fact equivalent to giving a, Lie by, a finite dimensional Lie by algebra. And this is what Drinfield double construction is about, matching up these two things. So first of all, let me explain how uh, when you have a Mannion triple, G, G plus, G minus, the Lie algebra G plus actually naturally becomes a Lie by algebra. So Lie by algebra structure on G plus. Well, uh, we have this uh, form. Uh, and because uh, these subspaces are Lagrangian, uh, the form defines a perfect pairing between them. This is uh, K, the ground field. 
And this pairing is perfect. So it's non-degenerate on each side. And therefore, it defines an isomorphism of vector spaces of the dual of G plus with G minor. And therefore, we get, this gives us a Lie bracket on G plus dual. We simply transport the bracket on G minus, because G minus is a Lie subalgebra. It has a bracket, and we can transport it to G plus star through this isomorphism. And, uh, and, and, and this gives rise to a core bracket, delta on G plus. And this co-bracket satisfies co-Jacobi. Because the bracket that we defined here satisfies Jacobi. The only question is uh, whether this satisfies the compatibility condition or the one co-cycle condition, which is the last axiom of E by algebras. And so that's indeed the case which is the subject of this proposition, G plus with delta is a Lie by algebra. So let me give you a proof. So this is a, in, 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 an enjoyable calculation. Some people feel that uh, uh, people who enjoy c calculations are sadomasochistic, uh, but uh, I guess I'm one of those. Uh, but this calculation is not too long because I don't enjoy calculations that are too long and too messy. So, so we need to check the one cos cycle condition, which I will briefly remind you. Uh, and so, uh, well, if you want to check an identity like that, uh, this is an identity, uh, well, this is supposed to be, so A and B are elements of G plus, and this is supposed to hold in wedge two of G plus. Uh, and uh, to check some identity in wedge two of G plus, uh, let us pair through this pairing uh, uh, this with, uh, with a, a uh, tensor product of two elements of G minus. Let me call them uh, F and G. So for any F and G in G minus, let me compute the inner product of tensor product F tensor G with this thing. So I will use pairing G plus cross G minus 2K or G minus cross G plus 2K. It is the same thing. So I'm going to take F tensor G with delta of the commutator AB. And because of uh, the fact that delta is defined as dual of the bracket, this is just uh, F bracket G inner product with A bracket B. And then because uh, the inner product is invariant, according to my definition, this is equal to, uh, well, I can throw A on this side. So I'm going to get F G A with B. And then I can use a Jacobi identity on this bracket FGA, and I guess uh, get uh, from the Jacobi identity the following expression, FAG B plus FGA. Because what Jacobi identity tells us is that when I compute the commutator of A with the commutator FG, I have to first hit F and then hit G and then uh, take uh, the sum. So I'm hitting F here and I'm hitting G here and taking the sum. And uh, now I will use uh, the invariance. Uh, well, so this is one thing. Uh, uh, which is that uh, I, I computed uh, this expression, and it turned out to be equal to this. Then, uh, on the other hand, uh, 
Let me see uh, what happens if I uh, compute the inner product of this with the same product, f tensor g. f tensor g with uh, I joint a. Uh, well, let me write it fully. a tensor 1 plus 1 tensor a with delta of b. Uh, well, I can uh, use uh, the, uh, again, the invariance of the form. Uh, and uh, so this is equal to, I can throw this a tensor 1 plus 1 tensor a on the other side. And what I'll get is f a tensor g plus f tensor g a with delta of b. Well, I'm tempted to just con convert it and say that this is inner product of B with the commutators here. But that would not be tr correct because uh, note that this bracket F with A is already funny. It's a bracket between G plus and G minus. And that bracket, I told them, I told you that these are not going to commute. And in fact, if I bracket an element of G plus with an element of G minus, I will get two, two terms, one in G plus and the other in G minus. So therefore, uh, I can't just uh, write it uh, this way, because uh, 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 so, uh, so what I should write, that this is equal to f a, well, delta of b takes values in g plus, wedge 2 of g plus. So I should take the minus part of this thing. Where by if x is in g, by x minus, I mean projection of x to g minus. Uh, uh, and similarly, x plus is the projection of x to g plus. Uh, and now I'm happy because both of these are in g minus. So I can use uh, my uh, uh, definition of delta. And I get that this is f a minus g plus f g a minus inner uh, with b. So we see that uh, we got the same thing, except for the little minuses underneath. So they are not the same. And they shouldn't be, because uh, I only used one term here. So let's subtract. And what we get is f tensor g with delta of the bracket a b minus uh, a joint of a times uh, delta of b is equal to the same expression here, but with the pluses. Because when I subtract the full thing, take the full thing minus the minus part, that will be the plus part. OK. And so now I can uh, use that this is invariant and move g to the right side. So I get that this is f a plus g b plus uh, g a plus bf using the invariance of the form. And in fact, uh, uh, I can put the minuses here uh, because uh, the plus things pair with the minus things. And the pairing of plus things with plus things is 0. And then I can uh, remove the plus here because that would give us 
the same answer, again, because minus thing with minus thing pairing is 0. So we can just get pairing Fa with Gb minus plus Ga minus with Bf. And then I can move uh, the f uh, to, uh, to the right. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, bf minus. Yes. And then I move the f to the right. So let me put a on the right side. So I, I'm going to switch sides, which will be uh, Uh, GB, well, let me just write it this way, A with uh, GB minus F plus A uh, FB, uh, BF minus G. OK, so this is the answer that we got. But, uh, and, and see that um, this is really uh, the same thing uh, as, uh, as this thing with A and B interchanged, except, except that uh, uh, Well, here, uh, so if you interchange A and B here and put B here and put B here and put A here, uh, uh, we will get uh, uh, the same thing uh, uh, as here, uh, namely this term is uh, the same as this one, and uh, this term will be the same as this one, uh, uh, except for uh, uh, signs, uh, because here the bracket is in different order, and here the bracket is in different order. So uh, we, we, will, we should get the same expression as, uh, as this, uh, except for, for the sign. So, uh, so we conclude that this is a minus uh, this thing with A and B switched, F tensor G, and uh, this thing is uh, uh, B cross 1 plus 1 cross b uh, bracket with delta of a. And so that's exactly uh, what we need. Well, I can write that shortly as a joint of b times delta of a. And uh, comparing uh, this thing, which is with this thing, they're equal according to what we've shown, we get exactly that uh, F tensor G with uh, delta of AB min uh, minus ad, uh, A delta of B plus A B delta of A equals to zero. OK, so this is the end of the calculation. Any questions about this? OK. And so, uh, so we see that uh, uh, this uh, G plus is a Lie by algebra. And uh, then we can go also can go back. Uh, so suppose we have a finite dimensional Lie by algebra, A. Delta is a finite dimensional Lie by algebra. Uh, then uh, I'm going to set G being A plus A dual. Well, so far it's just a vector space. And I'm going to call this G plus and going to call this G minus. 
And so this is going to be my money in triple, g, g plus, g minus. Uh, so what do I need? What data do I, am I missing? Well, first of all, I'm missing the form. But luckily, there is an obvious one on the direct sum, a plus a star. So the form, natural form, it's supposed to be symmetric form. So if you have a in a and, a, uh, and f in a dual, and so let's say a1 and a f1, and you want to take the form with a2 and f2, well, the obvious definition is that you just take f1 of a2 plus f2 of a1, because it's supposed to be a symmetric form. It's the only thing you can write. So we have the form. Uh, and then uh, the only thing uh, we're missing now, uh, well, I mean, uh, the, these g plus and g minus in that case are Lagrangian with respect to this form, because they're just a and a star. So this is just tailored to be Lagrangian. Uh, the only thing we're missing is the bracket between a and a star. We haven't defined it, so we haven't defined the Lie algebra structure on G. So we need to define this Lie algebra structure, and we need to show that the form is invariant with respect to that Lie algebra structure. Well, that tells us how we should define it, because let's just write down the condition that the form is invariant, and then we will guess the definition. We don't need to invent anything. So condition of invariant form. So let's take a in a and f in a dual. And so what would the condition be? Well, suppose we want to compute a bracket f. So this a bracket f should have components both here and here. And let us first compute the component, which is an a star. So that means we have to take inner product with b, which is also in a. And this is in a, and this is in a star. Well, if the form is invariant, we should be able to throw a on the other side with a minus sign. So this should be f uh, a bracket b. So this tells us what this part uh, should be. We should define the minus part of a f. To be, uh, well, this is uh, uh, minus the uh, uh, adjoint of a dual acting on f. So this is the adjoint operator of uh, the dual. If you like, you can also write it as add star of a times f, coadjoint action. But I will write this so that it's unequivocal, because when you define coadjoint action, sometimes there is a uh, people use left actions or right actions, and there could be a confusion. So I will write it this way so that there is no confusion. This is just linear algebraic adjoint of the operator adjoint of A. And then it comes with a minus sign. OK, and then uh, also AF with G, which is, which is in, a uh, in A dual. Uh, is, uh, well, now I have to throw f on the other side. So this is going to be f, f bracket g. And so that implies that I should define a f plus to be plus a joint of f dual acting on a. So this means, so form would be invariant. If and only if a bracket f is equal to a joint f dual of a minus a joint a dual of f. That's the necessary and sufficient condition. And so now I'm basically done, except that I have to prove that the Lie algebra structure that I defined is indeed a Lie algebra structure and satisfies Jacobi identity. So the claim is this satisfies Jacobi on G. And, and this is I'm going to leave as an exercise because my time is getting short. Any questions about this?
So that's a straightforward calculation, the Jacobi identity. OK. So, uh, so that means that uh, if we have a Lie-by algebra, we can construct a Manion triple. And if we have a Manion triple, we can construct a Lie-by algebra. And these it's easy to show that these operations are inverse to each other. And also, we learned what is the commutator between g plus and g minus. It is given by this formula. And it has components in both g plus and g minus. Uh, so that means that the notions of Lie-by algebra and Manion triple are equivalent, which is great, because the notion of Manion triple is much easier to understand. Uh, so now, actually, I want to say that if you have a Manion triple, then, uh, well, obviously, G plus is a Lie-by algebra, as I explained. And G minus also is a Lie-by algebra, because it is simply the dual of G plus. Uh, uh, but it uh, turns out that G, was, G is itself also a Lie-by algebra, and not just a Lie-by algebra. G is actually a quasi-triangular Lie-by algebra, which is what I, the notion I introduced last time. It has an R matrix. And so that's a very important thing, which I will now explain. In fact, G is also a Lie-by algebra which is quasi-triangular. Uh, and to show that, um, I'm going to set delta G. Well, I said that uh, uh, G plus and G minus uh, are, or A and A dual, if in another notation, are Lie by algebras. So um, I'm just tempted to define this delta G as a sum of the co-brackets of, del, uh, of A and A dual. And that's almost correct. But you have to take not the sum, but the difference. And that minus sign is important. Because without the minus sign, it wouldn't work. So clearly, that this is a Lie algebra structure. Well, it is just the direct sum of Lie algebra A and co algebra A dual with the opposite sign. But actually, the claim is that this is a Lie by algebra structure. So they are compatible. And we, know we need to show that this thing is compatible with the commutator defined by this formula. And uh, I, this is easy to prove, but uh, actually, I don't need to because it's going to follow from the next thing I'm going to say, which is, in fact, that this Lie by algebra, this is not just a Lie by algebra structure, but it's a co-boundary one, and moreover, a quasi-triangular one then the co compatibility condition will follow for free. So define R twiddle. And that's an element in G plus tensored with G minus, or maybe in A tensor A dual, inside G tensor G. Well, it's just a canonical element in the sense of linear algebra. So if I have EI, which is a basis of A, and EI star, which is the dual basis of phase star. Then um, this R tilde is simply the sum of EI tensored EI star. And I claim that this is the R matrix for this Lie by algebra. So proposition R tilde is a quasi triangular structure on G. And the corresponding uh, delta, by definition, differential of R tilde is uh, delta A minus delta of A star as above. So that implies that this formula really defines a Lie by algebra structure, which is quasi triangular. OK, so let me uh, show that. Uh, and so that, again, is going to be a calculation. Uh, 
So the first thing that you need to prove is uh, that, uh, well, uh, uh, so the first thing you need to prove that the classical Young-Baxter of R tilde is zero. And this is going to be an exercise. So that's straightforward from the formula. You just uh, compute the R12 bracket with R13 plus R12 R23 plus R13 R23 using this formula and using uh, the, this formula for the commutator of elements of G plus and G minus. And very quickly you're going to get, that takes a couple of lines. Uh, then uh, I also want to compute, so the only thing that I'm left, uh, well, this is not skew symmetric, but uh, the uh, bracket, uh, uh, well, I, I, to show that it's a quasi-triangular structure, I need to show that R, R tilde plus R tilde 2, 1, which is equal to S, is uh, G invariant. But that's clear because this is just uh, sum of EI tensor EI star plus sum of EI star tensor EI. And that's just the inverse to the form. So that's the Casimir element. And uh, the next thing I have to prove, this is something that I will show, is that uh, the delta, uh, which is dr twiddle, is in fact delta A minus delta A star. So I'm actually going to show that it's delta A when restricted to G plus or to A. So let me take A in A. Uh, I'll show that different, uh, differential of R tilde evaluated at A is equal to delta of A. So how do you show that? Well, so what is differential of R tilde at A? Well, that's A tensor 1 plus 1 tensor A with the sum of EI tensor EI star. So I can write that as the first plus the second, so sum of A E I tensored with E I star plus sum of E I tensor A E I star. And uh, so this is uh, the sum of A E I tensored with E I star, which is what I keep from here. Uh, and then I use this formula. So here I have to commute an element of A with an element of A star. So I use that formula over there, so I get two other terms. So this is going to be the sum of E I tensored with a joint of E i star dual acting on A minus the sum of E i uh, e tensored with a joint of A dual tensor E i star. And uh, now I note that uh, these two things are the same. Uh, that's simply the definition of the dual, uh, the dual operator. So if I have any operator, maybe I should write that as a joint of A times EI. And then the definition of dual uh, is exactly this, that if I put it here, I can throw it on the other side with the star. So that means that uh, this thing cancels with this thing, which comes with a minus sign. And I'm left with just one term, which is the sum of EI tensored with a joint of EI star, star times A. And uh, so let's see what this is. Uh, and to see what this is, I uh, take inner product of that with F tensor G. I'm testing it on two elements of G minus, or A star, because This is conveniently in G plus, in A tensor A. So to get to know what it is, I need to 
take an inner product of that with F tensor G, where these are both in a dual. And so I can do it by components. So this is the sum of uh, EI inner product with F times a joint of EI dual, dual A with G. But then we use this trick, which is very useful in this type of calculation. When you have a sum of F with EI times something involving EI dual, you just delete this term and replace the EI dual with F. Because the sum of F EI, EI F, EI dual is just F. That's a definition of uh, 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 what the dual basis is. And, uh, and so this is the same as uh, a joint of F dual A comma G. And then I can throw it on the other side. And I get A with F bracket G. And this is the same as delta of A with F tensor G. So this means that uh, this thing here is equal to delta of A. And so, that, so what I get is that uh, dr tilde of A is equal to delta of A. And similarly, if F is in A dual, you can show that dr tilde of F is actually minus delta A dual of F. And the, you'll get the minus sign. And that's why the minus sign needs to be there. Yes. Yeah, you can draw, but you, you, I, I'm dyslexic with pictures, and I'm better with letters. That's, that's, uh, that's why. <laughs> actually, my book with Schiffman, uh, they have, there are many picture proofs. But, but actually, proofs in the quantum section of the book, which do with Hopf algebra, are a lot more complicated if you write them this way. And their pictures help much more. These proofs are pretty simple, so, uh, uh, so it, pictures are not really needed. Yeah, because the, it is easier to be dyslexic with pictures. It is a two-dimensional dyslexia as opposed to just one-dimensional with words. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, so, uh, So now I want to explain that, in fact, the Drinfield double, co double construction is, in fact, the uh, universal uh, construction of a quasi-triangular Lie algebra. Uh, so in fact, ah, maybe I should def make a definition that uh, G equals to A plus A dual uh, with its Lie algebra structure. is called uh, the Drinfeld double of A uh, and uh, denoted DA, where you can decide where the D stands for Drinfeld or for double. And in the case of Drinfeld, you can decide for which D in Drinfeld it stands. Uh, so, uh, but uh, we see that in particular this A and A dual opposite, which means with the opposite uh, bracket, co-bracket, is contained in DA uh, as a Lie sub-bialgebras. So in particular, what we see from here is that any finite dimensional Lie bialgebra is a, a Lie sub algebra of a quasi-triangular one.
It's not true if you just take triangular. And that's why triangular uh, uh, is not general enough. It's not nearly true for triangular. So there are, tr there are too few triangular Lie algebras for this to be true. But it's just uh, enough quasi-triangular for this to be true. OK, and so now I want to ex explain that, in fact, uh, this is, uh, 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 in some sense, universal construction of quasi-triangular structures. Quasi-triangular structures. In, uh, in the sense that any uh, uh, quasi-triangular structure can be obtained as the image of R tilde of this sort under some homomorphism. So let me explain that. And this is a consequence of the following proposition. Uh, so, so, so let uh, uh, G be a quasi-triangular uh, Lie by algebra uh, with R matrix R. So this R is not skew symmetric. It's a quasi-triangular structure on G. Then we discussed last time that if you look at uh, G plus, which is uh, G plus R, which is the span, which is the set of all identity tensor F of uh, R, where F is in G star, and G minus, which is G minus R, which is the set of all identity tensor F of R, uh, uh, sorry, F tensor identity of R, where F is in G star, uh, are least subalgebras of G. Which are dual to each other. G plus is G minus dual. So in particular, and each of them is in fact a Lie bi algebra and a sub bi algebra of G. Uh, well, so I can take the double. So, so I can define G bar, which is the direct sum of G plus plus G minus. And then I have a, a Monian triple, G bar, G plus, G minus. So G bar is really the double of G plus. Uh, this G bar is not a, a Lie uh, uh, subalgebra of G, or, uh, no, uh, but it maps to G. The map is not, neither surjective nor injective in general, but it exists. So we have a linear map from G bar to G, such that pi restricted to G plus is uh, the identity and pi restricted to g minus is the identity. Whereby identity, I, I need, well, let me call identity g plus, identity g minus, whereby identity, I mean just the natural map from g plus to g plus and the natural map from g minus to g minus. But these uh, subspaces, g plus and g minus inside g, might intersect and might not span the whole thing. And so this map is, in general, neither surjective nor injective. However, we have the following proposition. So which says that this map uh, is a Lie algebra homomorphism. Proposition phi is a Lie algebra homomorphism. And pi tensor square of R tilde equals R. In particular, if uh, G plus plus G minus equals G, if they span the components of the R matrix span G, so G is the smallest Lie algebra containing R, such that G tensor G contains R, then uh, Phi from dg plus, which is g bar, 
to G is surjective. Uh, so G is a quotient Lie by algebra, is a quotient quasi triangular Lie by algebra of DG plus. So at least the Lie by algebra, which is spanned by components of G, of R, is obtained from the double by just taking a quotient. Uh, by something that is a Lie by algebra ideal, which means it's an ideal and also co-ideal, which is a condition from the problem discussed yesterday. Delta of i is contained in i tensor g plus g tensor i. So, the, it's, so any uh, uh, quasi-triangular Lie by algebra generated by its R matrix is a quotient of the double of something. And so in this sense, double is universal. And in fact, uh, uh, more is true. Moreover, we have the following proposition, which is quite impressive, which is that uh, this gives us, uh, in some sense, in terms of doubles of things, uh, of Lie by algebras, it gives us a classification of uh, solutions of the qua uh, classical Young-Baxter equation. So if you have uh, uh, A, any associative algebra, or maybe any Lie algebra, and R in A tends A, satisfies classical Young-Baxter equation, R12, R13, plus R12, R23, plus R13, R23 equals zero, uh, then, well, like you can still define G plus in the same way as here, let me call it G. So I don't really require it's a quasi-triangular structure. I don't require that R plus R to one is G invariant, but just require that it satisfies the classical Young-Baxter equation. And, and, and we get a map pi from the double of G plus to G such that pi tensor uh, squared of R twiddle is R. So this gives us a full description of, uh, in terms of doubles, of uh, solutions of the uh, classical Young-Baxter equation, and actually inside any Lie algebra. And um, this is actually, uh, uh, if this algebra is associative, there is a classical question in mathematical physics whether any solution of this equation can be quantized to a solution of the quantum Young-Baxter equation. And using this technique you, and the, the theory of quantization of Lie by algebras that I developed with Kashdan, you can actually prove that uh, that is true. Okay, so we start a little late, so how uh, I can have a few more minutes. Okay, because I want to, uh, so any questions about, about this? So th this is, an, so the proof of this uh, of this result. So the only thing that needs to be proved is that pi is a homomorphism of Lie algebras because this property is obvious. Uh, and the proof uh, of this is, a, is an exercise. So again, what you have to use is you have to use the commutation rule between elements of G plus and G minus. And the corollary, uh, by the way, of what I said is uh, that in this situation, when you have a solution of the classical Young-Baxter equation, not only G plus and G minus are uh, Lie algebras, but actually there's sum inside uh, G uh, is a Lie subalgebra. This is the image of this G bar. And you can prove that directly as well. So any questions? All right, so let me now explain the main example. Which is a Lie by algebra structure on the simple Lie algebras. And that would be the last thing I will say. And that's one of the main applications of this 
construction. And I will work over the field of complex numbers. So, uh, so if you have a simple Lie algebra, you in particular have Cartan subalgebra. Uh, uh, and uh, so this is a maximal uh, commutative subalgebra consisting of elements such that adjoint operators of them are semi simple. Uh, and uh, it's maximal for this property. And uh, there are many such subalgebras. They are all conjugate. This is a standard theorem in Lie Li algebras. And uh, also, uh, we have uh, uh, polar decomposition, or tri maybe triangular decomposition, triangular decomposition. Uh, uh, G equals to uh, um, n plus, plus n minus, plus h plus n minus. So this is generated by simple generators EI. This is uh, spent by the generators HI. And this is generated by the Fi. And this uh, subalgebra is called the positive Borel subalgebra. It's denoted B plus. And this is denoted B minus. Uh, so, uh, and there is a, also a non-degenerate form, which is unique up to scaling. You can take the killing form. And the way it works, it, uh, it's a perfect pairing between N plus and N minus. And it defines also a non-degenerate pairing on H. And H is orthogonal to both N plus and N minus. So this tells us, this gives us almost a Mannion triple. Uh, because uh, it, it uh, so we have uh, subspaces. So N plus, so this H is kind of small compared to N plus and N minus. Like when G equals to, so the examples, uh, but maybe the basic example to keep in mind is G equals to SLN. Uh, which is matrices of trace zero, and then um, n plus is uh, all the matrices that have non-zero entries can have non-zero entries only here. N minus is the same thing here, and uh, H is uh, the diagonal matrices with trace zero. So and uh, the form. Uh, is just the trace of the product. So you see that this Cartan is kind of small. The dimension here is n squared minus 1, and the Cartan dimension is n minus 1. And uh, uh, we have this n plus, which is definitely isotropic, and also n minus definitely isotropic. Uh, but uh, uh, the product, uh, problem is that they are not Lag uh, Lagrangian. and. Uh, uh, so you, you don't really have a, a splitting uh, into two uh, subalgebras like, like this. And so, uh, uh, for example, for SL2, this is odd dimensional. And, uh, and so you don't uh, really have a splitting. And so the way to fix it is, uh, but it is almost a Mannion, we almost have a Mannion triple. And so to actually have an honest Mannion triple, we will consider G tilde, which is G plus H. So that's, this, uh, we double up this Cartan, which is, stands in the way because, uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and then uh, um, this is, uh, there is a B plus twiddle and B minus twiddle. Uh, and the form here, we take the form of G minus the form of H. And then uh, B plus twiddle, we take uh, N plus, and we add uh, the set of elements X, X, uh, where X is an H. Uh, and the B uh, minus twiddle is N minus, which is the set of elements X minus X, where X is an H. So then uh, we do have exactly on the nose a Mannion triple, G tilde 
uh, B plus twiddle and B minus twiddle is a Mannion triple. So this is a proposition which is very easy to prove. Basically, this B plus tilde becomes Lagrangian simply because, uh, exactly because of this condition that we have a minus sign here. And uh, because of that, we have this R tilde, which is uh, uh, going to be a sum, uh, uh, this canonical element. And in terms of root generators, which I won't define, you can write it this way. The sum, uh, one half of the summation so, so let, for this purpose, uh, let, let me fix some notation. So we have uh, orthonormal basis xi of uh, h. And we also have root generators e alpha uh, and e min minus alpha for positive roots alpha, such that the inner product e alpha with e minus alpha equals 1. Uh, and so then the thing will be here, uh, that, that we will have here, is uh, uh, one half uh, the sum, uh, well, xi, tensor, uh, comma xi, so these are elements of B plus tilde, tensored with xi minus xi uh, plus sum over positive roots alpha, E alpha tensored with E minus alpha. So that's the R tilde as we defined uh, before. And uh, so this is a quasi-triangular structure on G tilde. And then, well, my purpose is to construct a quasi-triangular structure on G. And that's very easy. I just have to mod out by this H, which is central ideal. So G tilde maps to G by the map pi like over there, and pi of h is 0. So, uh, so that means that I'm supposed to kill these second components. And by the way, why did I put 1 half here? Who can tell me? I'm supposed to take sum of elements tensor dual elements. So why did I put 1 half? So I have the inner product xi with xi equal, with xj equal to delta ij. So in particular, xi, xi is 1. But if I take the inner product of this with this, uh, then I get xi, xi minus, minus xi, xi. So that's twice xi, xi. So this is 2. And that's why I have to divide out by 2. And so then I get that pi, tensor pi of r tilde. Well, these x's get killed, and they just get 1 half sum xi tensor xi plus the sum of e alpha tensor f alpha. And this is a quasi-triangular structure. This is called R, Drinfeld, and this is quasi-triangular structure on G. So this is called the Drinfeld standard structure. And of course, you can prove directly that it's a quasi-triangular structure. But in this way, you get it for free. And you get a conceptual explanation why it is. And so that's the structure which, when you quantize, you get the famous quantum groups. So this brings us to the topic of quantum groups. But unfortunately, there is no time to discuss them. So I can direct you to my book with Schiffman or other books on quantum groups and read about how all this plays out in the world of quantum mechanics. OK, thank you very much. <laughs>